Good afternoon, Divisions 1 and 2. Look where I am, your classroom. <laughs> Feels kind of strange to be back, especially without you guys here. It's a little empty. So as promised for your last English assignment of the year, um, you are going to get it in both forms, the video instruction, which I'm doing now, and the written instruction, which I emailed out to you yesterday. Uh, for those of you that received that, it looked something like this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain the requirements to you. Um, there's two choices, option A and option B. You pick one. Um, if this kind of thing really appeals to you and you'd like to do both, you're more than welcome to do that. And of course I will consider that for your final reporting grade. Um, but you're only required to do one. And they're similar. We're looking at the lyrics of songs and the figurative language within the lyrics of songs. So songwriting is essentially poetry, and poetry is essentially a collection of figurative language, language that is used with hidden meanings and things that mean something other than how they're written down, that kind of thing. Um, so you're going to have a little bit of, bit of choice here. So for option A, um, this is one assignment that we used to all do together. Um, a little bit hard to do over the internet. However, it's kind of a fun one for those of you that are really creative and like writing songs, poetry. If you're a musician, you might appreciate this one. Um, so what you are going to do is keep in mind that Rick Hansen, the man that that song, St. Elmo's Fire, was all about, uh, is considered an activist. An activist is a person who has dedicated a large portion of their life or their whole life to a good cause, a cause that they feel really true to their hearts. Uh, Terry Fox was another one. I listed a few others. Jane Goodall, we talked about her. We saw that documentary video about her and the work that she did with the wild chimpanzees. Malala, you guys have heard all about Malala for years. Uh, and of course, there's so many more. So I want you to think of an activist that you really admire. Obviously, don't do Rick Hansen because that's been done. So. Um, you could pick Terry Fox or any of those others or one that we haven't even discussed. Um, so imagine that you're going to help that uh, another musician write a song dedicated to that activist, just the way John Parr wrote that beautiful song for Rick Hansen. Um, now, writing a whole song can take a very long time and it can be very frustrating, so I don't want you to do that. I want you to write just the chorus of the song. The chorus is that piece of the song that repeats itself. Um, if you listen to a lot of modern music, you'll know exactly what I mean when I say the chorus. The chorus is short. It's usually between four and six lines. The chorus for the song St. Elmo's Fire was five lines. I'll read it to you. It was, I can see a new horizon underneath the blazing sky. I'll be where the eagle's flying higher and higher. Going to be your man in motion. All I need is a pair of wheels. Take me where the future's lying, St. Elmo's Fire. So that piece, those five lines, were repeated several times throughout the song. The chorus of a song is what makes it catchy. It's what we like about it. It's what you usually remember. And for that reason, the artist um, or the songwriter usually throws a lot of figurative language in it. it. tends to be rhyming or alliteration. Rhyming, as you know, is when the ends, ends of the words sound the same. Alliteration is the opposite of that. It's when the beginning of the word sounds the same, usually the first letter. Um, so your chorus should have one or the other, either a bit of a rhyming scheme or an alliteration. Um, and then you should have some figurative language. So if you look at Rick Hansen's song, nearly every one of those five lines had some figurative language in it. I can see a new horizon underneath the blazing sky. So was he actually visually seeing a new horizon? No, he was working towards bettering the lives of people with disabilities and he knew he was making ground. So he's using that comparison, that metaphoric language of the new horizon and his work taking effect. So that's one figurative uh, piece of figurative language that you studied, we studied the metaphor. Now, keep in mind, um, you don't, don't feel like you need to label the figures of speech. This one's a metaphor, this one's an oxymoron. You don't need to do that. Um, but you, you, you want to put some of that in there. Um, also, when you're done with your chorus, you're going to write your chorus to a song 
four to six lines somewhere around there. Um, we want you to explain any hidden meanings, any comparisons you're doing, any figurative language that you're doing. You can do that in the form of a paragraph, um, or you can do what I'm doing right now, videotape yourself talking and explaining it. If you're really brave and you're a musician and you want to hum your, your tune, go ahead. Um, every year I have a few students that want to go above and beyond and write a whole song because that's their thing. They're musicians, they love it. Go for it if that's you. Um, but that can be a lot of work and it can be very intimidating, so don't feel like you have to. Um, you may just write your chorus, your four to six lines, and you're good. Um, if you get through your course and you're like, oh, I kind of like this, I want to keep going, keep going. Just let me know. Um, I'm right around June 15th. I'm going to be starting to write your report. I should be finishing up writing your report cards by then, so we'll need to see this before then. All right, so that's option A. Option B is a song analysis. So you're going to think of some of your favorite songs that you listen to. I know you guys have lots, um, so you're going to have to be selective. You got to choose um, with clean language. I know you know what I'm talking about, but if you don't, if you're if you're worried that you might accidentally choose a song that is inappropriate, please run it by me. You're not going to get in trouble. Just say, Mrs. B, I don't know if this is okay or not. What do you think? I will give you an honest answer. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to print out the song lyrics. You can either hand write it. It's going to look like a giant poem. It won't be in paragraph form. That's not the way songs are. They're like poems. Short lines. There's very often rhyming and alliteration going on. Um, you can cut and paste it from the internet if that's easier, whatever you like, but get your song lyrics out. Then you're going to get some colored highlighters or colored pencils or something like that. And you're going to color code all the figures of speech. Um, for example, metaphors happen a lot. Metaphors and similes, those are the strong comparisons. They happen a lot in songwriting. So it's not uncommon for a song to have four or five metaphors in it. If that's the case, grab a yellow highlighter. Every time you see a metaphor, highlight it in yellow. Um, and then on a separate sheet, all you're going to do is explain what that metaphor is. Well, here, John Parr is comparing the life of Rick Hansen to the scientific phenomenon of St. Elmo's fire, which is an electrical phenomenon that takes place over the ocean. So that's just an example. Um, one thing to note is I do want you to recognize a lot of figurative language and some modern songwriting is very repetitive, which means there might be one really strong figure of speech, but it's just that one that's repeated. If that's the case, you're probably going to need to pick another song. If you really have your heart set on that one song, then you're just going to need to do another. So if you're feeling like you can't find one song that has many examples, then just do several of your favorite songs. Um, it's not a lot of work given that you can cut and paste the lyrics into a Word document or a Google Doc or something like that. You don't have to hand write. So if you do pick two or three songs to do, um, this shouldn't create too much more work. Uh, and just like option A, I'd like you to do a little bit of analysis of the hidden meanings. There's always hidden meanings in songs, things that mean something other than the literal sense. Um, the other thing I wanted to note for both option A and option B, um, sometimes there are figures of speech that come up when grade eights do this assignment that are uh, not one that we've studied. So we studied simile metaphor, we studied hyperbole, personification, oxymoron, idiomatic expressions and puns. But there's more than that. Um, so you might come across these. Don't feel like you need to label it. If you can't quite figure out what it's supposed to be called, but you know it's figurative language, that's okay. Just tell me that. Uh, you don't need to label it. I'll give you an example. There was one in the song St. Elmo's Fire. Um, his fourth line where he says, all I need is a pair of wheels. That is a figure of speech called a synecdoche. A synecdoche is when you take a small piece of something to represent the whole thing. Um, well, obviously Rick Hansen needs more than just his pair of wheels. He needs the whole entire wheelchair 
and he needs his support team that's helping him out with um, you know feeding him and all that stuff that he needs while he does that world tour so that was a synecdoche um, the reason why synecdoches are effective is they show sometimes that uh, how how powerful something is so Rick Hansen is this one guy in a wheelchair but he was able to do so much so that's why the use of synecdoche was effective so if you come across a figure of speech that you don't know how to label, don't worry about it. Just let me know that you're recognizing that there's figurative language in here, and this is what I think is going on. All right, um, any other questions about what you should be doing? Um, please just fire me an email and I will do my best to help you out. If um, you are unsure if a song is appropriate to analyze, give me the name of the song and the artist and I will get back to you right away. Um, if you're wanting to do option A where you're writing the chorus of a song um, and you want to know if you're on the right track, say, I th I'm thinking about doing this. This is the activist I'm dedicating the, uh, the song to. I'm thinking of using simile to compare this person to, I don't know, a giraffe. Um, let me know and I'll tell you what I think. You don't need to race through this assignment. Take your time. Um, I like it by end of the day, even though I, uh, yes. Uh, Friday, June 15th by end of day, because I will be that weekend, 16th, 17th is, is when I'm gonna be writing your report card. So I need it before then, obviously. Um, and this tends to be one of the assignments that grade eights really enjoy. So try and enjoy it. I know I love reading them. The things you guys come up with are great. Um, your taste in music is definitely different than mine, that, but that's okay. I like reading um, how you guys have found figurative language within your song lyrics. Um, and if you want suggestions on songs to analyze, maybe you want to go outside of your comfort zone and not use the songs that you typically listen to, um, I can give you some suggestions. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, classic rock and roll songs that have um, a lot of references to history and they're, they're kind of fun. So I can give you some suggestions if you like. Take care for now and can't wait to have some of you guys back in here. <laughs>